I um forgot what I was gonna talk about. Oh yeah. Um it's 22 days away. Well, it's no 21 days away now. Wait, what's today's date? It's the the, the seventh, right? It's uh 12:57 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh 12:57 a.m. Friday the seventh. On Teach Your Controversy, this is Teach Your Controversy Live. A lot going on, you know? So, um, straight from the beginning, we're going to be covering um, Bruno versus Garcia the whole week. Um, the press conference, the media workout, the weigh-in, you know, the fight. It's going to be a pretty long week for T-Street. But anyway, um, shit's about to get real. Either Broner's going to win and be looked at um, as being forgiven for a lot of his past boxing sins because they're saying he's a 5-1 to one underdog. I don't believe he should be that much of an underdog. Um, my personal opinion is that, um, and he did not say it again. For those who don't know, um, yes, that was me at the press conference that called him flat-footed. But I didn't call him flat-footed. He didn't let me finish my question. He didn't let me finish my question. So what I was trying to, okay, I can be pretty pretty long-winded when it comes to uh, asking questions. You know, sometimes my questions just be too long and too complex and I'd be confusing the boxers and shit because of my, my vast boxing knowledge. No bullshit. Um, but what I see is I see that Mikey Garcia is an excellent boxer, but he's not known to be a a, a, a pressure fighting power puncher. Also, he'll be the smaller fighter. Even though Marcos Madonna and Brandon Rio said that um, he hits hard, but in my personal opinion, Broner only has issues, or, or we've seen that he has issues with pressure fighter volume punchers. Broner is known to have a low punch output, especially when he's under pressure. Also, if you've seen his feet on, on Instagram, my God, pray for the brother. If you've seen his feet, if you've seen his feet, he got like Crip Keeper Jeepers Creepers feet. He got bat feet. Like, he looked like he got the Lost Boys feet. You ever see that love the Lost Boys? With fucking, uh, uh, you know, the saxophone dude and shit? The Lost Boys, the vampire movie. You know, when they was hanging upside down in the cave and they feet, he got hobbit feet. Not because they little. You know, they just like they look like they can just he can walk barefoot anywhere. But anyway, um the point I'm trying to make is you know, he he be he be on some flat footed shit. But he can box though. So what I'm saying is this if somebody's there in front of him, he has um, excellent hand speed and accuracy. The issue is when under pressure, all the way back to Fernando Quintero, Daniel Ponce de Leon, Gavin Reeves was able to touch him up, Paulie Malinaji, Marcos Maidana beating, Sean Porter wasn't even pressuring him like he pressured Keith Thurman, and even Adrian Granados. So if it's like, if you look at the keys to victory, it's not just me saying it. If you look at the keys to victory to beat somebody like Adrian Broner, throw him, throw more punches than him. Just try to out throw him and don't get hit by the uppercut because he does have, he does have some power. You know? So when it comes to Mikey Garcia, can Mikey Garcia do that? Or is Mikey Garcia going to try to box Broner? You see where I'm going with this? One thing, um, I, 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 how can I put it? We're going to talk about digital marketing next. And we're going to talk about like how Adrian Broner is one of the most marketable boxers there, there, there is today. But his marketability will drop drastically, dramatically, if he loses to Mikey Garcia. You see what I'm saying? So this is a must-win fight for him in so many different ways. But when you look at how marketable he is as a fighter, and you look at, man, if he really was the take like boxing seriously you know and if he really was to um um you know like focus 
and understand that, yo, boxing should be first for you, bro. It's your number one source of income. Then if you want to be a rapper and, and, and a street, you know, celebrity and shit, be that third. You see what I'm saying? So we've seen that in the past he has had issues making weight. But overall, with those issues aside, remember um um he had the little uh, uh, uh segment about billions. You know them shits were entertaining. Even his rapping career, you know he had what make me I like that track. So it's like this. I'm like Showtime is doing a very good job, a better job than HBO as far as like marketing these fights to um the demographic that watch the fights. Like there's been like a disconnect with with um marketing fights to like the wrong age groups, if that makes sense. So somebody like Adrian Broner, he's very he's very marketable uh, to what? Um rappers, celebrities, um, you know, um young up and coming boxers because he's flashy. You know, urban communities as they as they're called. So I be wondering sometimes, like, do these people who are in charge of these, um, the these social media accounts and the ones that are making these promos, do they really understand, you know, the demographics they gotta go after? Because truth be told, some of this shit be corny. Like for example, the last good we okay HBO twenty four seven has been kind of dead and dry and just whack, hasn't it? Now you gotta think. Um, is it all on the boxer's fault, like the boxer's fault? So, for example, isn't it HBO's job to market the fighters? Isn't it Showtime's job to market the fighters? Because you want to put as much with, I guess, spending, spending as um, little as possible um, by having high quality, you know, to, to get exposure for these fighters. So did you notice, like, some of the stuff that, you know, you may see on these big um, network or big promoter pages? Like Instagram and Twitter and stuff, that shit don't be like you don't be like, oh wow, I'm really really hyped for this. Some of that shit be generic, not like you know it be high quality stuff, but it's like who are you really reaching, you know? Because the young kids like, oh this shit was corny, you know. We wanted we want to see not necessarily we as far as my age group, but they want to see stuff you know that's um, you know, not hip hop, but more so like in touch with the times, like press conferences be boring as shit. It's not saying that, you know, you have to go up there and you have to talk shit. You know, it's it's, it's just that something different has got to be, you know, done, you know, to get people to watch and more so to, 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 to build the interest for the fights. Like, for example, the days of suit and tie media are over. Did you notice that? Or slowly dying out. Print media is dying. You know, it's going to always be around, but... The thing is, the numbers are not going to nowhere be um, where it was before. For for example, years ago, remember you used to have to rush to the newspaper stands to get the Ring magazine and know what the rankings are, who the pound for pound was. Remember those days? Now, with the internet and social media and all these different sites competing with each other, I have a fucking website right now. So I guess what I'm getting at is, um, for a guy like Adrian Broner, he can be much bigger than than he already is, if not only he focused on the sport, but if, you know, um, they tried, like, you know, like, new things or more so, they put, like, some, a, 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 a little more marketing behind, uh, um, and maybe a, a team to help him out with certain things, you know, when it comes to his show that he used to have about billions. By the way, there's a new, uh, promotional company that I knew, they've been around for a little bit of time right now, up in, um, up in, uh, Canada, um, Basically, I'm going to try, you know, I'm not going to confuse you guys. I'm going to explain just what the shit is just to get it out the way. So, basically, Linus Lewis got a promotional company. Right? He's sitting on a lot of money. And basically, he's a promoter who is, like, cautiously easing his way into the sport, if that makes sense. Which is smart. You know, you want to, like, survey the landscape and shit before you start pumping money in and then losing money. It said rumored. That Rock Nation is in a bit of a situation like that. Even though um, they may be Rock Nation sports, you have to think they have a budget for their boxing sector. You see what I'm saying? And it's, it's been rumored that they're on their way out to sport. You know, as far as did you notice they haven't 
like signed into boxes or anything like that lately? Or they're not putting on any like solo events anymore? Did you notice that? Very telling sign. So basically, um, there's a there's a show that they have, or it's more than a show. It's more of a um, like a series, you know, that's like going to branch out into different things. So it's not HBO 24/7. It's not all access. And you can see that with the production quality. Um, go check it out. I'm gonna put a link right down in the uh, in the description box. You can see that with the quality and with the potential finances that they have behind them, that things can really, um, like if done right. Because basically, what we've noticed, like with a lot of promoters these days, what I've learned is like they be lawyers or you know older folks. <laughs> And it seemed like they'd be out of touch on who they like appealing to when Instagram, Twitter, Facebook Live, Twitch, you know, um, um, you know, YouTube, you know, that's where the people are going. That's where the interaction is. You know, those are the people, you know, that you need to target and say, listen, we need y'all to buy these fights or support these fights. We got to give them a reason to. You know, how was that big ass truck? Oh, um, so I guess what I'm saying is, um, damn, I can't wait to get my screen share. I'm teaching myself how to use this new program called, um, called XSplit. And basically what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to, um, screen share things. But, uh, the point I'm trying to make is, is that if you had like a younger, I'm not trying to say younger. See, I'm wondering that when it comes to I know no would no this this all ties into Broner versus Garcia. This all ties into Broner Garcia. I'm wondering like when they hire these 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 digital marketing people, these people who are like in charge of like your social media accounts and the ones who you know have the final say when it comes to like the type of promos they put out. I'm wondering if those people are boxing fans that you know, have grown to get to positions in power like that, or were these people that were hired because of their degrees and their expertise, and it's like, oh shit, you got to flash learn boxing. You was working in baseball uh, last year, you know, but this year you're working in boxing, and you really don't know nothing about boxing, but you're in charge of like the social media and putting out promos, and you know, doing like, um, what is it like, like surveys to, you know, know what people want to see and shit, like who's in charge of that type of stuff? You know, like when you look at like um, um, what is said to be, you know, 130,000 pay-per-view buys for Kovalev versus Ward or Ward Kovalev 2, you think like when it comes to a fight like that, you got to have guys like Andre Ward and, and Kovalev doing doing promos and, you know, you got to have like, you know, like uh, like music, you know, you got to get people hype, you got to do countdown, Ward Kovalev. 19 days away with a fire ass promo and have like the two burning and shit flames and sparks you know have the fucking russian flag you know you know i get i get crafty i get crafty you know i already do now you know i be already I already ruffle people feathers you ain't seen you ain't seen nothing yet once this mayweather mcgregor shit start you know so it's like this like i feel that guys like keith thurman for example a guy like Keith Thurman, he just got married. And it was a whole festival. And you know Keith Thurman is a spiritual dude. I said this before. I would say, hey, Keith, listen, uh, you the champion, but you know we got to get these promos out, you know, to keep you marketable. I know you like to, you know, stay to yourself, stay from the cameras, and, you know, be in box when only you have to box. But listen, we need, like, a couple hours. So let me tell you what I do, right? I got a very vivid imagination. You know, that's why I can't wait till I get, like, you know, able to do this type of stuff. I have Keith Thurman, right, just in an all-white suit, you know, on some Miami Vice shit, chest hair all out. You know, I have his hair just straight perned, and then he'll be sitting at the piano, or he'll just be sitting there in, like, an all-white room with, like, a beautiful view, and he's got his flute with his custom flute bag that he probably knitted and made himself. How do you make a flute bag? I don't know. What's that? Co crochet that shit? And I haven't pulled out his flute and I, and I haven't to do some shit like, hi, this is 30 seconds of Keith one time third. 
and then he'd just start playing like on the wings of love and some shit on the flute. And then that'd be it. Motherfuckers would be cracking the fuck up. So a guy like AB, you already know he got some shit. For example, I don't know if he still does it anymore, but it was a time where you would be able to go on his Snapchat, right? And let's say, for example, it was like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, where the bars have to close and shit. Go on Adrian Bonas' Snapchat. You see him with Big Ash. Yes, Big Ash with the 7X white t-shirt on. And it's snug as a bug. And he out there humping her. Or getting like wings at some dodgy, shady ass late night spot. Truth be told, shit like that is really must see TV. That's the type of shit like, oh shit, you'll look at like, damn, he gonna be fighting on fucking Saturday next Saturday. And he out doing this crazy shit. However, at the same time, you may say, well, why publicize that shit? Yo, it's about time that boxers started having reality TV shows and shit, truth be told. So, you know, let me stay on topic because this is turning out to be a long ass video. I just look at it like this. Um, when it comes to like any promoter or um, a boxer, even or any fighter or anybody who's trying to do something different as far as to help the sport or 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 to keep up with the times of the sport, you know, you have to support them. So, um, as I said, it's a company by um, Linux Lewis. Hold on, let me pull it up. And basically, they're trying to bring boxing to Canada, and they're going to be hosting a lot of events in Niagara Falls. And what it is is, it's a it's from what I get from it is that they're surveying like the landscape. So they have the finances as far as they have the finances, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to word it. They have the finances, but they're not being risky, and they're not making all this loud noise, like going out trying to sign these boxes, getting turned down, and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? So it's something that um you have to think about. Oh, by the way, also the uh, the co-creator is a guy uh, named um, Les Woods. I found out he's um good friends with um Bob Arum and has been around for uh, quite some time, and also. His grandfather, what his great great grandfather, or maybe his grandfather, I forgot, was um a champion before. So I I just think that, you know, what I noticed that this company is doing is that they're doing a different um approach as as where they're trying to like reach out to the demographic that they're supposed to reach out to by having a younger generation in charge that that is really in touch with what's going on. I've been saying this for years now. It's like, why didn't they start putting press conferences on, like, Facebook and shit? You know? But not Facebook Live. Who was it before? Uh, Periscope Live and all that. You know, now with pay-per-view dying, yes, pay-per-view is dying. You know, social media is the way to go. You know? So... I know this was a long ass video when it was like uh, about um, multiple topics, but basically I wanted to um, get that out there. Also, I want you to really, really click the link down in the description box and basically watch the promo and, and like look at it and leave me some comments and let me know. Also, I'm going to post it all on um, all of my social media too. You know, so I want you to really, really let me know like what you think and if they keep that quality. Uh, the company is called uh, Global uh, Legacy Boxing. You know, if they keep, I'm going to put the link to the promoter's website and um, a link to the uh, Golden Access series. You know, and what Golden Access is, is it's not HBO 24-7. It's not All Access. They're going for, um, like, basically, like I said, you know, like, All Access, we haven't seen, you know, what they have to offer with Mayweather McGregor All Access yet. But remember, one All Access, what was it, Mayweather McGregor? No, Mayweather Birdo was born. You know, Mayweather, um, even inside Mayweather Pacquiao, that was the uh, Showtime version. You know, that wasn't really that good. And you have to think, what more differently could they have done? I don't know. But at the same time, we already knew what he was getting. A look into Mayweather's money life. So I'm wondering, like, with this new company and what, what they're trying to do, 
is I don't know what you have to wait and see. <laughs> I'm teaching controversy. This is teaching controversy live. But seriously though, uh, click the link down below. Watch the promo, um, or or the um, watch the video, and then go check out the website, and then uh, let me know what you think. Also, uh, I don't know if I gave my prediction, but yes, I am going with Adrian Broner. Teach you controversy. Teach you controversy live.